Okay, so we talked about, and I showed you how to map a file library, a document library in um, SharePoint to your team channel. Now let's look at the two things um, <clears throat> I promised, which was versioning and granular permissions. So we'll start with versioning first. So here's our mapped library that we uh, put together in the last video. I'm gonna go to open in SharePoint. And let's take a look at site contents so we can get to our mapped library, which is here, version documents. And let's take a look at the versioning we get out of the box with Teams. So if I were to go to this document here and say version history, you'll see that uh, there's three major versions of this document right now. Now, off screen, I've actually made about seven or eight changes to this document. And so far, I only have, um, I only have uh, three versions of it. So it seems to create major versions almost according to its own internal logic. And I've never seen it go past three major versions. So major versioning is basically useless. The default versioning that Teams uses for your documents isn't going to work. Um, because what you want is granular versioning that allows you to roll back after changes have been made, uh, ideally every time someone saves a document. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to this document library. And so you set versioning on the library itself, not on individual documents. So I'm gonna go to the settings for this version documents library and I'm going to go to version settings and you can see you get a couple of things here. Um, one thing is you can require approval for submitted items. So if you have an approval workflow for your documents you could set up so that a document that was in draft mode would needed to be would need to be sent sent to a approver of some kind uh, bef and that person would approve it before uh, a document could be published. So if you have that kind of thing, you can do that. We're not going to do that here. Um, we have the default versioning set on this library, the same for every files library in Teams. It's major versions. What we want is major and minor, which gives us real version control. Um, how many numbers of major versions? Uh, 500 is the default. That's a lot of major versions of a document. Um, you can up this if it's something you're going to be working on for a long time, but 500 is plenty. Um, and you can decide who can see drafts of a document. Um, so uh, anybody who can read the document can see the draft. Uh, only people who can edit the document can see the draft or approvers can only see drafts. So uh, we're gonna leave it here. And then the last thing you can do is um, you can require document checkout. And so that means that when someone starts to edit a document, they have to check that document out. And once they do that, the document is locked and nobody else can get in there to make changes. In some scenarios, that's a good thing. However, if you want to have co-editing of documents where multiple people can work in a doc at the same time, that's definitely not what you want. So we're going to say leave that as no. So the only thing I've done here differently is I've changed, uh, I've gone from major version to major and minor. I'm going to say OK. And now I've got the versioning I want set up on my, um, my new document library. So let's go to that version documents and teams and make some changes to this default document. So I'm gonna go in here. I've already got some stuff in here. And we'll edit. And 
F and we'll add some things here. Make some changes. And insert image. Insert a picture of Clippy. And we'll make one more change. We'll just bold that. All right, so we've made changes here. So let's close that. And now let's go look at what kind of versions we have for this document. So we'll go back to our version documents library. And now let's take a look at document one, see what we have. So now I have a couple of versions. And so what happened there was, and the reason I stayed in that document for so long is I wanted to show you that a version is not created every time um, you close the document. A version document, a version is created every time um, you autosave a document. So every time you, you may have noticed in the screen up there as I was typing that there was a little message that said saving, saved, saving, saved. And so it does that um, every time it saves a document, it'll create a version. So it's just a lot a lot more granular and a lot nicer. And uh, so what you can do here is now that I've got the version you I want, you can uh, choose a version and view it so you can see what's in that, um, in that version of a document. And uh, if you want to go back to a previous version, you can say restore or you can delete if you've got some versions that aren't necessary, you can just delete the ones you don't need. So you can kind of control this area here. And, um, and then once you have everything you want and you're ready to publish, what you can do is then come to the ellipsis, say more, and then publish. You can make comments is the new, Version of the document. Publish that. And let's look at version history now. And so this is version 4.0. So I've got 2.0, which was, or 3.0, which was the previous version of the document. Um, it wrapped up all of my previous changes into 3.1 and um, then it published a new version 4.0. So that's kind of how this works. Um, you know, when I start making changes again, it's gonna make 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. Um, and then once you publish, it's gonna wrap all of those changes into 4.1. It assumes that you've got everything you want. Um, you don't need to roll back. And so uh, it'll put all those changes in 4.1 and uh, and then publish 5.0 would be your next major version when you published. So that's a look at how version control works. And so if you need that, it's a good feature to have.